All right, guys. So what is going on? I have my guy Manny Jexler. As you guys know, oh, hi, guys. if you're familiar with the channel, you guys know this guy's face. Um, so we're going to be doing a little podcast. This is the first Ankle Athletics podcast, and it's going to be my solo podcast. As you guys have seen, the Natty Roundtable, something we've been doing recently. Manny will definitely be on there as well as a guest. Um, but this is going to be my solo podcast, like I said. So I might do some solo work totally by myself. Might do some stuff with Manny, um, which you guys will definitely see more of, and just anyone and everyone that I would like to have on the channel. So really excited. Going to get you guys some questions answered that I think you probably were wondering about Manny that I'm actually wondering about. I don't think I've actually asked some of these things to you, um, even just between our conversations. So um, maybe not as directly as I'm going to be right now. So uh, like I said, I, I'm excited to, to talk with the man, and he's uh, he's definitely wise above his years, and it's it's good to have him on the podcast as the inaugural first guest so uh so yeah so we'll get going man what do you have to yeah. say say hi to the people yeah well first off how's it going everybody i'm glad to be on uh glad to be on here with joe i appreciate the kind words joe but but yeah i'm uh i'm excited to uh hit on a couple topics you know that um i've gotten questions on before and just kind of get those uh get those answers out there and you know you know like i said i you know some of the questions i've gotten um repeatedly and people still continue asking, so it's kind of just nice to, uh, you know, sum it up. Some, yeah, sum <laughs> it up and um, and give the people what they want, you know. You exactly. Know, with better words, so. Ex no, exactly, dude, exactly. And I'll kind of give you some background if you are unfamiliar with Manny. If this is the first time you've been introduced to him. Manny is a kid I met. I actually followed him on social media. I believe for the first time, if you go back and watch um, mm -hmm. my most, most viewed video on my channel, because this dude, still to this day, was the most peeled the most, the leanest person I've ever seen, person in general, whether you throw age in there or not, that I've ever seen in person. And um, yeah, well, came down, kidding. I met him. I met him through 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 uh, through social media. Came down, but before his bodybuilding show, and I and I threw up the video that a lot of you guys have seen. And um, no, this kid, like I said, wise above his years. Uh, Manny, how many times have you got, have you went to state in wrestling? Three years. Uh, two years. Two, so, two years. Uh, yep. Okay. So yes. I got, I, I took second so exactly so the kid is, is, is educated when it comes to nutrition when it comes to discipline and actually doing it the right way when I wrestled I was an idiot when it came to my nutrition and, yeah. and that's where he has the discipline a lot of times people see that and they don't realize really the backing that he's had um, not only with his upbringing with his parents are great great family but him himself he, he applies the discipline that he's learned from wrestling to pretty much what he's going to do with his life and, and thereafter, but especially with fitness that you guys can see. So yeah. he's got about, what do you have? What do you have? Like 20, like almost 22 oh, or 21, 21,000 followers on Instagram. You got like 14 K. Yeah. yeah. So the kid has, he, like I said, he's wise above his years. Go follow him if you are not on Instagram. Um, but like I said, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an intro. How old are you now, Manny? You're 17 right now? I'm 18. Yep. 18 I, now. 18. Oh, yeah, he's 18. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, hell yeah. So that's, that's no. awesome. Yeah. I've known him. I was gonna say when we did that, he was 16 still. So when we did that video, it's, some time has passed, and he's made some gains since yeah. then too. But I digress. So go check him out. But I'm gonna get into some conversation with him now, and I'm gonna start you out, Manny. Basic question here: What got you into bodybuilding specifically? Because you're a wrestler, but what got you into the niche of bodybuilding? Well, um, so like you're saying, wrestling has, you know, the thing with with wrestling and, and now bodybuilding that, you know, is my main passion. And um, wrestling has taught me that, that structure and that discipline ever since I was a kid, you know, I've wrestled since I could walk basically. I mean, mm -hmm. probably since I was four, I think I was like four years old when I first started wrestling. And so I've learned wrestling has taught me everything I know. Um, it's been my life since I was four and, you know, without wrestling, I have no idea where I'd be, you know, and so it's, it's taught me everything that I know. It's taught me so many lessons about, um, dedication, uh, discipline, you know, I, everything, you know, there's a saying, and I don't know if you've heard it, but it, you know, it's kind of a famous saying by, uh, Dan Gable, who's a famous wrestler. Oh, yep. Um, I know a quote. Yep. Everything else in life is easy. And it's, it, it really is. I, I do believe that because I think it's, it's one of the most, mentally and physically demanding sports on the planet. And so I, I credit a lot of. Say that ahead. again. I think I just interrupted you. Say the quote again. So people hear that again. Yeah. Um, once you've wrestled, everything else in life is easy. It was by 100%. Dan Gable, Olymp Olympic champion, never scored on in the Olympics. So, um, so yeah, like I said, wrestling has taught me everything I know. And I, and I credit everything 
um, my discipline to wrestling and it, and it's transferred perfectly over into my, my passion with bodybuilding now. And, um, just everything I know about bodybuilding because bodybuilding too is it's very physically and mentally demanding. And so, um, it, it, it's, it's helped me tremendously and it helped me with discipline, um, when it comes to my fitness goals, um, and everything like that, but kind of answer your question. Um, so I, I wouldn't actually credit wrestling for getting me into bodybuilding. And I think I kind of, uh, uh, mentioned this to you when I, when I was visiting you, um, a couple okay. months ago, I kind of brought it up to you about kind of my, my past story and I'm, I'm actually working right now on, on a post that I'm going to be posting here. I might, I might make it like a, like a two series post on kind of my story of, Do you it. know, and it, I would love that. Yeah. And so I've kind of been, I've kind of been working on it and, you know, it's also something I want to bring to YouTube eventually as well. I was going to say, we need to come up and do a full production on that. That'd be sweet. Yeah. dude. Get some shots at Stratford and get some, all oh, that'd be cool. Right. Anyways, keep going. But yeah. Anyways. So kind of my story, kind of where, you know, my, my past a little bit. And like I said, I think I mentioned this to you, but anyways, so I've been working on this post. So I'm going to get it up here in, in a little bit here. But um, so I'd say it was about seventh grade. Um, it was seventh grade, I think. And, and you know, I was wrestling. It was kind of in the middle of the season. And you know, I, you know, I didn't know at the time. I didn't really know like what an eating disorder was. I didn't really know like um, what it, what exactly like that stuff was. But I, it was like I knew it, but I I didn't because I was I was going through it right. So I was going through an totally. eating disorder. It was stuff. It was seventh grade. It was like the middle of wrestling season. I was like super like, like stressed out. You know, I was going to wrestling practice every day and I, my life was basically just getting consumed by a school wrestling. School wrestling. That was it. You know, so I felt like I had no freedom. And so my, my freedom came with, with eating. I started controlling my eating habits and everything. And slowly but surely, you know, I didn't, I, I was recognizing it as it was happening, as my eating disorder was developing. Jeez. And so that's kind of where... Did that, it, it, did that feel like that was like the only thing you could control essentially kind of what you, was, I hear you. It, it was, that makes sense. Uh, I've heard that yeah, before. It was, it was, yep. It was, it was my eating. That was the one thing I can control. And I remember Joe, I kid you not, dude, when I, I was in seventh grade, my, my school, my elementary school was literally a hop, skip and a jump away from my house. Right. Mm -hmm. So we would walk to school yeah. every day. And there was days where I, when the bell rang at 3.15, when school got out at 3.15, I would sprint home, sprint home as fast as I possibly could to the scale and oh, check wow. my weight on the scale. I kid wow. you not. Like, it, it was that bad. Yeah, it, it was, that it was is, rough. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. When it's, when it's that, yeah, it was, like, that's definitely your focus, your first focus of the day. Yeah. It, it was, it was just like that. And, you know, it was, it was easily the lowest point in my life, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. you know, as that kind of progressed you know I started to you know slip into some depression a little bit and it was rough it was it was like you know here I am this seventh grade kid and you know it's kind of went through kind of went into eighth grade it was mainly just my seventh grade year but you know it was so it was so rough and it was like you know I didn't want to wrestle I didn't want I wanted to quit wrestling I think the lowest I got was like 72 pounds wow and, yeah and, and Manny how tall are you just so people know if they're not familiar I'm five foot tall so he's not five the biggest foot. guy in the world, but 70 pounds. I was five foot when I was in, uh, I think when I was in seventh and eighth grade, when I actually, when I wrestled, I'd wrestle at like 93 yeah. pounds in seventh grade, but I was five foot two. So, I mean, yeah, 20 pounds on a five foot frame is very, very drastic. It, it, it was rough, dude. And the, the thing is, is the year before I wrestled 74 pounds at, at a national, for a national dual team for wrestling, I wrestled okay. the 74 pound weight class. But even then, I had you to cut. Me this. You told me this. You were you were I, dead. At, you were dead set on hitting that weight. Set, even back to that weight class. For some reason, I I don't know why, but I just was. I just knew like I was gonna go back to seven four pounds. And and at the time, it was like the lower. It, I wanted to blame wrestling for for a long time because I didn't want to accept it in myself that you know this was happening because wrestling kind of the whole thing is is and not so much anymore. But in the past, it was the lower the weight class, the better. You know mm -hmm. because the better. And so I kind of pounded that into my own head and it, and from there, it just, it just plummeted. I remember it was our, it was our wrestling. It was our, our Stratford wrestling duel where I'm from. We were hosting a, a tournament mm -hmm. that we have every year. And I, and I went to weigh in and I weighed like 73 pounds, like just super light, like, like, like to the point where I was almost even embarrassed to like step on the scale because I, 
I just knew like others around me, like that checking the weight. Cause like we knew everybody knew like who I was, you know, and everything. It was just like, that's not right. Like 73 pounds. Like, come on now. You know? And I remember not eating like barely anything after weigh-ins. I would, I was just like chewing gum and everything. And I just, Which is when like, a lot of people go ham, like the most people yeah. like eat a lot. Yeah. Right. And I was so good at playing it off and hiding. And I even told you, Joe, there was, there was a time, I think it was probably a month long period where I literally ate nothing but fruit. Fruit. Mm -hmm. That was it. I didn't eat anything but fruit. And I don't, it was just, that was kind of like my safe. That, that's all I ate. And so there's you know, a Because you know, when it would be mostly water and the carbs you probably put right. to use because you probably did need some sort of carbohydrates right. and glucose in your muscles from getting beat Absolutely. up at practice. That's the other thing. Like you said, the quote says itself, hey, wrestling is like one of the hardest things you're ever going to do. So, hey, imagine doing the hardest thing you've ever done and then depleting yourself at the same time and then expecting exactly. performance to be optimal. Good luck. You know what I mean? Like, I totally understand that struggle. Like that. Yeah. And, and anyways, so we were at our, at our Stratford uh, tournament. And it was, I went out for my first match. You know, like I said, I was really good at, like, playing it off. You know, mm -hmm. I, I hit it for the longest time. And as I was keeping it in, it just was building up on me, dude. And so I remember my first match, I just, I wrestled this kid and I just looked like complete garbage out there. Had yeah. no, like, I should have beat the kid and I, and I lost and I was just devastated. I'm like, I'm like, I, I was just, I was, I was freaked out, dude, because I was like, my, my parents are going to know. Like, they're just, it, yeah. like. Because you're not, I, you weren't you. You weren't the Manny they normally saw on the mat or in general, like, really, I'm sure. But the I, mat probably really showed it. Yeah. I kind of just like, except I'm like, like, this is it. Like. Like, they're going to find out. I remember, like, my mom, like, my dad was, like, my dad, I think he was, like, like mad, like, confused. Like, he, he knew something was up. And then my mm -hmm. mom was, like, like, you know, something, ain't right? So we actually, that was the only match I wrestled that day. And so, like, like I said, my high school is just, um, can you hear I'm me? Here. Zoe was oh, trying to escape my room. <laughs> Keep going. So my, my high school's, you know, everything in my town is like in walking distance. So we we walked outside that day, and we were walking home. Like, so we were walking home, and and she. That's when my mom told me then that she had an eating disorder when she was. Oh, a kid. so then so it really opened up to you then. Yeah, then she opened up to me because she 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 kind of just flat told me she's like, you have an eating disorder. She kind of just told it, and I think I just like broke down crying like I like I do like I I knew it inside for the longest time but I was just trying to like hide it and everything and, and that day it was it was um we got home and the first thing it, it's crazy because I just like remember all this stuff like play by play we got home and she made me like this high calorie like like smoothie shake you know and like peanut butter toast and like I was eating the stuff and it felt so good to eat it because like I had been eating fruit for the longest of time. I'm like, like, wow, this tastes amazing. And then like instantly I felt guilty. And I think I like, we like hopped on the scale and I was like 80 pounds. And I like, I couldn't even fathom if I had like 80 pounds, like, like no way. I was like, like losing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And so, and then, you know, kind of make long story short, you know, the whole process back, it was like from that point, you know, it I, I, there's times where I, I would slip up, you know, my mom kind of took up my eating then like to a T because it was either that or they were going to take me to an eating disorder clinic. And so after that, it was like, you know, there's times I slipped up and there's times that I would, I would, you know, exercise and excess and things like that. And, um, I'm trying to think now, you know, and so she kind of took over my, my eating then. And then I, um, you know, as I started to get a little more freedom, you know, I kind of wanted to get back into like working out and everything. Um, but to make a long story short, if I would have not had this eating disorder, mm -hmm. I would have never found fitness and bodybuilding and my passion for what I'm doing now. And that is my proof and my reasoning as to why everything happens for a reason. Because Right now, what I do is I, I, I love every, everything about, about bodybuilding and fitness. And that, that lowest point in my life, you know, that's why everything happens for a reason. And so kind of as I started to get a little more freedom into my diet a little more and everything like that, I, you know, our weight room was, is right there. You know, it's literally 30 seconds away from my house. 
And so I would go in like literally every single day, I would do the same exact work every single day. And it's crazy, dude, because now that I think about this, I, I almost like remember what I would do. I would do like dumbbell bench press. I would do like some squats. I would go mm-hmm. and do some cleans. And like, I would do like the same thing, like every single day. And then I had my, my shaker bottle with my, pro, with my one serving of protein powder in it mm-hmm. right after my workout. I would, I would drink- <laughs> the <laughs> typical, that's how everyone starts out. Yeah. And they're like, this is magic. This must be so, magic in here. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, this is it. Like, it doesn't matter how much I what do I or do. how much I have my protein right here. I just got to drink this. And, and so it was like that dude. And that was like you know as time and then I kind of like you know things kind of evolved after that but that was kind of like where I like first got into like doing the same routine every single day and it wasn't like bodybuilding style I was doing like power cleans and things like that more athletic performance athletic style probably what you were taught just with your by your coaches and stuff yeah yeah it's what you saw people doing in the gym honestly that's usually what people do like you know they're like oh I see people doing that I'm gonna do that (laughs) yeah that's that's funny but anyways so I kind of, you know, I, I kind of started getting into my own thing. And then I, I remember when I first got, like, started my Instagram account, like, my first mm-hmm. Instagram account, I was still kind of, reco- you know, I was still recovering from my eating disorder. And I was still, like, you know, trying to find, like, you know, a balance of, like, fitness while still eating healthy and everything. So I just followed, like, every single page out there that was, like, fitness, nutrition, uh. rest things. Where it was like low calorie recipes, but it was still like like healthy and things. So I wanted to follow like I'm like cause in my head I'm like, well if I can like eat all these things that are like low calorie, like it, you know it's it's completely fine, you know. I don't I don't know exactly, but but anyways I was following all these like these like healthy food pages and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I totally know what you're talking about. Yep, just like the yeah. general pages, yeah, that give recipes out. <laughs> You know, you start somewhere. And so I, I started, like, you know, following these pages. And then I kind of, like, started seeing more, like, like fitness and bodybuilding. And like popping like that. up and stuff on your, like, the random, like, suggested or something. You're like, oh, what's that? Yeah. And so, I, you know, I'd start following those pages. And then I, I think, I think like, the first, like, bodybuilder I ever followed was, like, Evan Sentani. You know okay. and I guess? I know you I, like him I, a lot. He's a good guy. I really, he's, like, he's still one of my favorites. And he'll mm-hmm. always be one of my favorites. But. Yeah, I think he was, like, because, you know, Animal at the time is still a huge, but Animal is, like, one of, like, the OG companies. He loves like, cooking, too. He loves cooking. Yeah, dude, and that's one He's of like the reasons. He's like a chef. Why. He's so yeah. articul- articulate when he does his book cooking videos, too. I love him. He's literally the jack of all trades. But anyway, <laughs> dude, so, so he, um, so he kind of, like, popped up, and I started following him, and I started following Animal for a long time. Hmm. And then, you know, as I, as I started, like, you know, developing that, then bodybuilding just kind of like, like hit me. Like, I was just like, like, this is awesome. Like, I, yeah. I love, it. you know, and so then like the whole fitness and then, and then my, my gears kind of started to, to turn and I, my mindset kind of changed. Like, I was like, screw being small. I'm like, screw <laughs> so, so then I was like, I was kind of like out of it. Like my, you know, my eating disorder was, it was I would say, you know, pretty much away, kind of, you know, those thoughts, you still get those thoughts, you know, when you're, when you're recovering from an eat, I still had those thoughts, you know, those thoughts would pop up for, I'd say probably a good year to year and a half after where I was like, you know, there's times where I, I, I just wanted to like not eat or, you know, things like that, where it's I was like, like guessing yourself almost. Yep, for sure. Yep. But, you know, you kind of learn to, um, and there's a time then where I saw like a therapist and everything. Okay. And you know, so I kind of went through like the whole nine yards. Like, yeah. like I, I was in a rough place with like, you know, depression and everything. Mm-hmm. My depression was starting to, you know, wear, wear away. And, you know, I was, you know, kind of with fitness was really helping with that. And so then I was like, you know, I, I, I want to like start like lifting weights. I want to start like watching the scale go up. And then I was like a, kind of like a, a contest with myself to like see like the numbers on the scale go up. And then, like, I, I'd, like, tell my parents and everything, and then they'd be like, you know, good job, like, keep it up. And that oh, felt really – For sure. Know, that, yep. that was, that it was accomplishing really – it was accomplishing in the same way you were accomplishing not weighing more, but you were like, oh, I like this. This is, like, goal-oriented. 
because that seems like the kind of guy you are, especially with the discipline of wrestling, where it was like, I work hard and then I win matches. Like, same sort of approach. Like, I, I yeah. work towards this goal and I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? I totally can relate to that. And it's good. You, you're like harnessed it in another way, um, which you were like, oh, this is, this is what I think is more beneficial for me. And I can still have the same sort of, um, I guess, feeling. With